Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bells again. This is for GOA and this is section uh, 1-5. Um, so uh, what exactly is in this one? Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff about angles. And uh, let me show you something right now, just so you're clear on this. So if I have something just like this, uh, two rays uh, that are not opposite rays, and they could be, um, but they're not opposite rays. Uh, they have a certain amount of opening in them right there. And uh, that uh, angle that we have right there is measured in something called degrees. And it simply lets us know how wide something is. So like uh, there's an angle between my fingers, and right now that's a small angle, and if I could make it wider, that's a bigger angle. Um, and if I do between my thumb and my uh, finger right there, that's approximately 90 degrees, and that might be down to like 15 degrees. And if I spread it out further, I can make it bigger than 90 degrees. But that's the amount of openings. And one of these suckers right here, uh, these things uh, are called protractors. They help us measure angles. So when I put, uh, put it on here, there's a little hole right here at the bottom. That needs to go at the vertex of the angle, and the vertex of the angle is that point right there. So I put it just like that. And then uh, this, this baseline right down here, this straight thing, needs to go straight along the bottom of this ray so that it's lined up right there. So again, vertex is at that point, straight along that line. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to read. And you can see right here that it gives me two different uh, markings. It gives me a big number. Uh, and this one would be directly between 150 and 160. That's 155. We know that that's not a 155 degree angle. So we got to make sure we start from the zero. So right here, this would be starting at 180, 170, 160, 150. So if I go in the inner portion of it, you can see that it starts from uh, zero. Okay. So 10, 20, and that looks like right in the middle. Uh, so that's 25 degrees. Now, I also could have taken this just like this and spun this upside down and had it gone so they start with the, uh, the lower numbers. So you see it's right here. Line it up on the vertex straight down that line. And you can see I can go up 10, 20, 25 degrees. I honestly, I don't care which side you really use on this thing as long as you realize that if it is... Uh, smaller than a right angle, you need to use a smaller set of numbers. And if it's bigger than a right angle, you need to use the bigger set of numbers. Okay, so what are some other descriptions here besides using this protractor? Well, when we name angles, we can call this angle. Let's put some letters on here. We'll put a B and an A and a C on there. So I could call this angle A because of the fact that there's only one opening here at A. Or I could call it angle BAC, which means uh, the middle letter has to be the vertex. Or I could call this angle CAB, but I can't, bad, I cannot call this angle ACB. Because technically angle ACB would be this angle right here. Do you see that? Okay, so we don't want to use that to refer to the angle that we're dealing with right now. So one letter, if there's only one angle formed with this thing, or three letters we would use uh, as long as the vertex is the middle letter. Okay, so those are some of the things. Now, what are some of the names that we have? So anything that is exactly 90 degrees uh, is considered a right angle. Anything that is smaller than 90 degrees, but not zero, so not 90 and not zero, the things in between it, those are called acute angles. Anything that is between, okay, so this is uh, zero is less than x which is your angle measurement is less than 90 degrees. That's acute. Uh, X equals 90 degrees. That's right. Uh, things that are bigger than right angles, but not quite straight angles. 
so 90 is less than the measure, the angle is less than 180, those are called obtuse. And then uh, if you have something that's exactly, like you have opposite rays, so they're going, it's, it's straight. So if this was opened up so it was straight down the thing, it's called, a, surprisingly, it's called a straight angle. And uh, that's where x equals 180, 180 degrees. Okay, so uh, you could have one here that, think about closing this up even more. So that both rays were going the same direction and there was no gap in between them. Uh, that would be, we would call a zero angle and where x equals zero degrees. Okay, so um, right now if I uh, take a look at our hands here um, like this, this would be, uh, pretend this is the vertex, this would be a zero degree angle. And then acute, trying to get it to right, obtuse, uh, and I can't. I can't do straight. Maybe you could do straight. Uh, I can't do straight in terms of the angle. Uh, my wrist just don't bend like that. So hopefully those uh, those help for you in terms of uh, being able to know it. There we go. And um, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to guess this one right here. So let's try a couple things. First off, this angle. Um, let's call this angle. Put some waters on here. I got an F and E and a D. Could I call this angle F? Answer? No, can't call it F. Um, um, if we're talking about this thing, this is the one we want to refer to right here. Can I call it angle E? Yes, I can call it angle E. Can I call it angle F E D? Yes. Can I call it angle D E F? Yes. Can I call it angle D E? It's only two letters, can't do that. Um, again, uh, this one's got to be, can I call it angle, how about this? Can I do this? Angle F D E, can I refer to this thing as angle F D E? Answer, no, can't do that. Good deal. So now that we know how to name it, um, how about how big is this in terms of a description? This is a zero degree angle, acute, obtuse, right, straight. Hopefully you guessed obtuse because it's bigger than 90 degrees. Now, without using a protractor, I want you to just guesstimate how big do you think it is? Uh, so, in my brain, this is what I would do. And actually, you think. Pause the video, stop it, guess it, whatever you got. Visualize it, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay, so um, here's what I would do I would kind of go like this. This is just my estimation skills. I kind of put that straight up. I go, hey, that's 90. Good deal. And if this was uh, equal, if this was right here in the middle, uh, it'd be 45 degrees in each amount, and it's not. This is bigger, so it's got to be bigger than 90 and 45, so it's got to be bigger than 135. So then I'm like, well, okay, is that about a third of a 90 degree angle? And if it was, then I would say that that's uh, 30, right? So 30, 60, 90, that would be three equal things. So my guess is I got about a 90 and I got about 60. This is about 150 degrees. So I'm going to approximate 150 degrees. Now I can make my handy dandy protractor out here and I can put it on here and I can go, hey, let's go to zero. Zero is the inside set of numbers and I go inside. And you can see that my ray doesn't stick out far enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to extend it. Just got to make sure that I extend it straight along that line. So I can see that a little bit better. Now you can see that I got it at, it looks like about 150, 151 and a half. Oop, let me put that straight on that one again. Uh, yeah, 151. So it actually was 151 degrees. My guesstimate, just off my brain, using some logic, was 150 degrees. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so hopefully you guys are good with uh, how to name them how to measure them, uh, what some of the rules and properties are. So now we're going to try and do a little construction. So I'm going to try and copy this 150 degree angle, just like that right down here. So I'm going to make another 150 degree angle. So remember constructions from the other day. So I've got to have a straight edge. And uh, I'm going to make one that's about that long. I'm going to take my, uh, my handy dandy little compass.
like this right here. I'm going to swing this arc just like this. So it goes through both of those things. And then I'm going to come down here from the end point of this. And I'm going to swing it the exact same way. And i got to make sure this doesn't move. This, the, this can't open up or down between the two swings of the arcs. Uh, now I'm going to come here and I'm going to put it on the two places where it actually crossed, where the, where the pencil lead touched it. Do you see that? Just like that. I'm going to come down here and put it on that right there where it touched. Yeah, see it? And I'm going to swing an arc right through there. So where those two things touch. Now all I have to do is put a dot where they touched. And now you can see that I'm going to take this just like this, and drop that right up in there, and those two angles should be identical, and if I go just like this, you can see when I put it out there, that it is, ah, look at that, it's 150, okay, so that one was 152 degrees, but it's close enough, so this is called copy and angle. Okay, so um, let's talk about a few. Uh, no, let's do one more thing here. Let's do bisecting an angle. So, bisecting an angle means I'm going to split that angle up into two uh, congruent parts. Two congruent parts. So, would you agree, are you with me, uh, that there's some place right here, uh, These, all these rays are in the in the middle of that angle, but there's some place that it's exactly perfect. So it's going to split this thing up into two equal smaller angles. So if this whole thing was 70 degrees, it would give me two 35s. Or if the whole thing was 80 degrees, it would give me two of them that are 40. Okay? So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and find that one. Well, obviously, I could find it using this and go to the halfway point. But we're going to try and do a construction. Remember, constructions can't use any of the little markings on here. So what do I do first? I take my handy dandy compass, and I put it at this point right here, and I swing an arc. Do you see that? Just swing an arc. And then the two places that it touched, I'm going to go ahead and circle right here. Two places where those arcs touch those rays. I'm going to swing arcs in the middle, of this thing. You see that? Swing arcs in the middle of this thing. Look at that. Now, I don't want this to open up or down, so if yours is sloppy and moves a little bit, that's not good. Oh, good. We want it to be tight enough so that it doesn't move. So now I'm going to take my handy dandy little uh, thing and I'm going to go here. This is my ending point. This one was my beginning point, and I'm simply going to connect those two points. So here to here goes just like that. So what I just did now was made two angles that should be congruent. Let's check them out here. Check them out handy dandy. Little protractor. This one shows that it's uh, about 25 degrees and this one shows that it's about uh, 25 degrees. Look at that. So this was 25 degrees and that was 25 degrees. Which makes the whole thing 50 degrees. And that is how you do a angle bisector construction. Okay? And you can practice that on your own. Throw some down. Uh, give it a shot. See what it looks like. Okay, so how do we do some math on some of these things? How do we get some algebra involved and stuff like that? Okay, so let's take this one right here. Let's go... Let's say I have this angle right here. And i got this thing here. And this is 4x plus 6. And this is 2x minus uh, 2. And that refers to an opening in degrees, and that refers to an opening in degrees. And uh, I put a little box in here. That means that this bigger angle is a right angle. So I want to know what the measurement of angle A, B, C is. How big is that? Well, I know it's 4x plus 6 as an expression, but I have to be able to understand how my math works out. If that's a right angle, then I should be able to write that 4x plus Oops. Sorry, that's what happens when I write in pen. 4x plus 6 plus 2x minus 2. Are they equal? Are they identical? 
Nope. There's nothing in here that says that they're equal. There's no congruency marks or anything like that. But we do know if I add them together, that they should equal 90 degrees. And what is this? That is an algebraic expression, and that's why we took so much algebra in our classes, so we can start using it and applying it. So let's do some math. So I get 6x plus 4 equals 90. So I combine my x's and I combine my numbers. Subtract the 4, so I get 6x equals 86. I divide by 6, I divide by 6, and I get x equals, and you can pull it out if you have some trouble with this, so 86 divided by 6, I get 14.3 repeating, that's important, make sure that you put the little mark over that, that it means that it goes on and on and on and on forever. And I said I did want to find out what the measure of angle uh, A, B, C equal. So does it equal 14.3? <gasps> no, of course not. 14.3 um, degrees is really small. It's right there. It's a little bitty opening like this. Um, I have to plug what x equals into that expression. So now I need to do this 14.3. And watch. If you want to, you can do this. It's kind of a cool thing. I'm going to go ahead and hit this STO button, this STO button right down here, store. I'm going to store that expression in x. It's going to look just like that, put a little arrowhead, enter. And now the value of x is 14.3, and if I just want to put something else in there, I can continue to do that in the future. So now I type in 4x plus 6, 4x plus 6, which is the expression I'm trying to find right here. And it's going to use x being what I stored in there, and I'm going to hit enter. And you can see that I get 63.3 degrees, repeating, 63.3, repeating. Now just to be clear, if I go ahead and plug this into here, 2x minus 2, watch, 2x minus 2, it's still keeping the x that I had from before. I hit enter and that's 26.6 degrees, 26.6 degrees, repeating. And that's for angle CB, let's call this F. Measure of angle CBF equals that. And surprise, surprise, guess what happens when I add 63.3 repeating with 26.6 repeating? I get 90 degrees. Okay. So there's lots of different things that your textbook's going to ask you to do now. So it could be that they give you... Uh, things where the angles are congruent, where it talks about this word bisector. So if I have this one right here and it says that this BD bisects these two angles, just because it looks like a right angle doesn't mean I can assume it's a right angle. So I'm not going to set 6x plus 4 equal to, or um, plus 3x plus 29 equal to 90. I'm not going to do it. This says the word bisector. That means those two expressions are the same. So I'm going to write 6x plus 14 equals x plus 29 and go ahead and solve that algebra. So again, that's what a bunch of these different problems look like, and those are all things that we can talk about in class for ones that you have specific questions on. So back to me here. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, if you guys have specific questions on certain things, once you watch the videos or once you've tried some of the problems, feel free to shoot me an email anytime. Um, I'm just putting these together early on, so uh, as we go, the videos are going to get a little bit more detailed, a little bit more, uh, the math's going to be a little bit more detailed, but I'm probably going to use this whiteboard a little bit more, but hopefully this stuff helps with you. Uh, stay on top of stuff. Perseverance. Uh, you're responsible for your future. Make sure you take good care of uh, your brain and uh, everybody else around you too. Take care.